In this video, I wanna teach you the most critical tips for becoming a life coach. And it's not what most people are searching for, it's definitely not what most people are teaching, and most people don't succeed in the coaching industry. The coaching graveyard is full of well-intentioned, highly capable people who are either not doing the right things or they're not doing the things in the right order. I'm gonna teach you the three different elements that are required to attract more clients and make more money and be more successful, but the key is you gotta go in reverse order. That's what almost everybody misses. It's gonna be counterintellectual to most people, but all successful coaches do it this way. In fact, if you don't have as many clients as you want, you're missing ingredient number three, I guarantee it. And then I'm gonna break down certainty. Certainty is the single most important factor at an unconscious level that prospects use to determine who they're going to hire as a coach. So when you follow these six ingredients of coaching certainty, you're gonna to get to the point where people are so attracted to you and the message, and it's just landing on all cylinders, that they can't not hire you. You're gonna love it. Let's go to the classroom. Welcome to this episode of the Truth About Coaching Show. We're gonna talk about tips for you to become a life coach. Specifically, I'm gonna teach you the three C's of business success. Business is in quotes, and I'm gonna explain that in a second. And then the six, not in a second, in a few minutes, and then the six elements of coaching certainty, the six ingredients that you need to have certainty as a coach. So I'm assuming that you want to be a coach because you wanna make a business of it, either a side business around your current job, or you wanna do this full time. That's why most people get into this industry. And everything I'm gonna teach you here has that context. And I wanna give you just a real open, honest conversation about this coaching industry because a lot of people fall into traps. A lot of people fall for bait, for lack of a better word, uh, about what it really takes to succeed in this industry. And if you want to create some business success here, then you want clients and you wanna be able to make money. And that is actually pretty simple to do, but you've got to do it in the right order and you've got to do it in a way that is aligned with you. And I think way too many people are falling for the, 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 uh, the secrets and the templates and the one size fits all you know, assembly line approaches. So I don't want you to fall for that. Coaching is an amazing opportunity if you do it in the right way, what I believe is the right way based on 15 years of doing this work. And there are three different stages of a business, three different business models, and they really work as stages because you can't get to the third one without the second and the first one. 99% of the people need to start at stage one, which is a business. Then if you want to grow your, your business beyond that, the next stage is a company, and then the stage above that is an empire. That's not what we're gonna get into in this episode. If you want more information on that, just drop a comment and we'll make sure we get you that information. We'll probably dive into that in another episode. But I want you to understand that this is the first stage of a business that's generating money. And this is where most people not only should start, but I would say probably 70% 70 70 of the people should stay here. Almost everybody needs to start here. Most people should stay here. But the templates and the rules that most people are following are from the other business models. That's what's so critical for you to understand. And if you follow the business models and the templates and the rules and all that stuff of, a, of an empire and you're not even solid and stable as a business yet, then it'll never work. And that's one of the main reasons why people continue to struggle because they're just out of alignment with their business model and where they should be. So the three C's of success as a coaching business, in other words, the way to start making money and what you need to get coaching clients is actually quite simple. The first thing is a conversation. People are the ones that say yes to coaching packages. You don't sell to markets, you don't sell to profiles, you don't sell to avatars, you sell to people. And for a person to say yes, they generally, especially in today's world where there's not a whole lot of trust online, people generally need a conversation. And opposite of what a lot of people think, getting into conversations about coaching and then making an offer 
is actually easier than trying to sell something online with a blog or a website or something. But a lot of people just want to do it that way. They think that it's, it's a little bit more convenient. They think they can reach more people and nine and a half times out of 10, they're actually wrong. So the easier thing to do is actually not what most people think, which is another reason why a lot of people really struggle. So you need a conversation with a human. You need a clear offer. Clear is the emphasis there. And then you need certainty. Now, this is the order that you'll experience. Like as a prospect, this is the order that you or other prospects would experience the process, right? There's a conversation, there's an offer, and then the decision is really going to be based a lot, if not primarily, on certainty. And actually, I would say primarily on certainty. Now, this can work its way up into these other pieces throughout the conversation, but when it comes time to say yes or no, the most critical unconscious factor that the prospect will be assessing is going to be certainty in several different things. And I'm going to break that down over there in a moment. But even though this is the process or this is the flow, the order that most people experience it, you've got to generate it in reverse order. <laughs> this is one of the big, big mistakes that a lot of people make. We see what we experience and we know that step one is this and step two is this and step three is this. So we think that's the way we create these things and it's actually the exact opposite and this is why a lot of people, like the more confusing this is, the more variables that you put into the process, the harder the process is going to be. So my advice to everybody, especially as a new coach or a coach that hasn't created the stability and the success that you want in your business yet, is you've got to focus where it matters the most, which is certainty in both yourself and your skills and your seeker and the core elements of your business. You've got to have certainty around all that stuff. Now, Let's talk openly and transparency, uh, transparently about the coaching industry. The industry is a free-for-all, pretty much. It's like the wild, wild west. There is no set guidelines. Whereas if you're gonna be a therapist or a counselor or a lawyer or a doctor, you gotta go through the clearly defined steps. And that's because there's regulation in those industries. The government has said, for you to call yourself a therapist, you have to get licensed through our standards, through our curriculum as a state or as a, as, as a nation or whatever the you know, regulating body is according to the industry. And once you prove your competency by taking whatever tests we're going to give you, then we will give you a license that says you can practice in this industry. Coaching doesn't have that. And from one angle, that's a good thing because you can get in motion a lot faster. From a different angle, it's a horrible thing because people get in motion a lot faster and without regulation, anybody can sell anything, right? I can't open up a, a law school that's going to teach people how to get through the bar exam if I'm not certified by whatever the regulatory bodies are. So I can't teach people how to do this because I need to fall under the guidelines and the regulations as well. The coaching industry doesn't have that, so one of the big factors for a lot of people deciding what to get certified in or what to study is which philosophy do you buy first? I mean, imagine in school if the first step, like let's say there wasn't a uniform set of textbooks to teach certain subjects? What if there wasn't one main way to teach mathematics? And the first thing is you have to decide what type of mathematics you want to purchase. And there's 50 different types. There's this kind of math and this kind of math and this kind of math. And you first have to decide which one of those curricula is the, the right one for you. 
And then you go in and you follow the, the game plan and you, you get the teachers, you pick the school or whatever. That's kind of like what coaching is. You have to first decide which philosophy you agree with or what's going to be right. But the problem that a lot of people face is there's no way to tell because there aren't these standards that says this is reputable and that one's not and this one's legit and that one's not. So a lot of people get hung up in trying to figure out what the right curriculum is to follow. And they're doing it from an external viewpoint generally because that's what we expect in you know, professions like I was just talking about. So they think like what is the most reputable brand or curriculum or what's going to be the most recognizable uh, coaching philosophy or coaching certification or what have you. And the reality is there's really no such thing. I mean, of course there are reputable brands and companies and, and companies that are not as reputable and companies that have been around for a long time and companies that have been around for a few minutes. But there's no requirements from a client standpoint when it comes to certifications and when it comes to certain schools. And here's why. Clients don't know. Clients don't know what schools are even out there. Clients don't know the difference between EFT and NLP and all the different abbreviations and all the different acronyms. That They don't know all that stuff. The clients just have challenges in their life and they want help. So when people get really caught up on what curriculum or what program should I study from a recognition standpoint, they're really searching for status. Right? What certification is going to give me the status from the potential client's perspective? And I'm just telling you that's borderline irrelevant because the clients don't care. People don't hire certifications, people hire certainty. So you can get a certification but not have certainty in your body, people aren't going to hire you. You can have certainty in your body and never even have a certification and people will hire you. That happens all the time. Now I suggest for most people, go through a certification program, but for the sake of certainty. That's the thing. Not for the certificate, but for the certainty. And if your end game, your main intention is the certainty, then you have to decide what's going to be best for you. Not, what, not what's going to be most recognizable by a market. That's just not the way that it works when people are involved, right? When people are the ones that are making the decisions, people are the ones that are having these conversations with you or you're having the conversation with them, they want certainty and they can feel it. They can feel the lack of certainty. And just because you have this really exciting certificate on the wall, that doesn't mean they're going to feel safe or, or that they're going to trust that you can actually help them out, right? And I'm not coming from a place of philosophical arguments. I'm not like this is the way it should be. I'm just saying after 15 years of this industry, in this industry, this is one of the main reasons why coaches struggle is because they don't have certainty. Not because they don't have certifications. I know a lot of coaches that have a ton of letters after their name without clients. And I know a lot of coaches that don't have any letters after their name with a massive amount of clients. So the operating ingredient is certainty. And when you're looking into a certification program, you got to put yourself in that pro. Is this going to help me achieve what I want? So what kind of work do you want to do? Do you want to do really deep work? Or do you want to do more surface level work, right? Do you want to teach people how to move along with, you know, more surface level goals or how to make money in the stock market or, or things like that, which is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But if you want to do that, then you have to get a, a program that's going to give you certainty on that path. If you want to go deep work, then that's not really going to help you, right? Like, so we created a coaching program. I created a certification program about three years ago. And the point was to give people the certainty and the depth of awareness and knowledge, not a certificate. And if you're not into the deep, deep transformational work, you're going to hate my program. You're going to hate me. The modules are going to be too long. You're not going to like the depth of understanding that we dive into because that's not the kind of work that you want to do and, and vice versa. If you want to do that deep, deep transformational work, but you go to 
an institution that's really more set up like an assembly line and you're going to have to fit into sort of the cookie cutter approach, you're, gonna, you're not going to like that approach either because there's not going to be as much individual attention for you to succeed along the way and it'll feel like you need to conform to what the, the, the profile of the coach is or fit into the box of the coaching curriculum and that's not going to be in alignment with you. So both paths are totally fine but you need to pick the right one that's going to help you create what you want to create in the world. And that's, that's why we offer free consultation programs to start with who you are first. What's most important when it comes to building a business is not the marketing, it's the marketer. Who are you? What do you want? What do you want to create in the world? Who do you want to support? And then let's take a look at the marketing that's going to match the marketer. So we've got to go in this direction. And the cool thing is, once you have certainty, these other things actually show up a lot easier. And I'm going to get to that in a second after we break down, in a few moments, uh, after we break down what actually creates certainty. So there are six ingredients in coaching certainty. The first one is, interestingly, something that a lot of people just don't do is they're not a client. They're not a product of the product. If you haven't said yes to a private coaching package, it's gonna be really difficult for you to offer a private coaching package. And if you're not a product of the product, then it's gonna be almost impossible for you to have advocacy when it comes to explaining to people why they should do this or what they're going to get out of this because you haven't said yes to that and you don't know what it's like to get out of this particular transformation, whatever it is for you. So you've got to be a client. I actually think it's fraudulent to sell coaching services if you haven't hired a coach. I think it's ridiculous. And energetically, there's misalignment that people, uh, people feel. The second element is intellectual learning. And this is essentially the curriculum. You're gonna learn techniques, you're gonna learn concepts, you're gonna learn coaching exercises, and that's one of the steps that we all need, obviously, to learn a, a new skill or to grow into another level of business or personal growth or what have you is, what do I do? What, what's the how to? So there's an intellectual learning that's important there, but then there's intellectual implementation that's more important. Because if all you do is learn the skills, learn the exercises, you might intellectually understand them, but you don't know how to use them. Like you might understand a hammer, you might understand the elements of a hammer and how to swing it, but if you don't know angles or you don't know when to use a hammer, how useful is the knowledge of the hammer really going to be from, a, from an uh, implementation standpoint? So you've gotta get some, knowledge, but then you've got to immediately implement it. And what that looks like usually is practice. Practice private coaching sessions or practice coaching sessions with people. Watch coaching sessions from other people doing it so that you can just get the information in motion, right? So that you can implement it and understand a lot more. The fourth element is embodied implementation. Now, for knowledge to get into the body, that's a level deeper than just knowledge getting into the head. So that doesn't require only practice, that requires bathing in the curriculum, bathing in the transformation. I'm gonna speak as though you wanna be a deep work transformational coach, you wanna help people through beliefs and pain and help them remove their fears, right? If you want to do some of that deep, deep work, uh, which I think is amazing, then you've got to bathe in it. And so what that usually looks like is live events, live events that are specifically designed to give you the embodied implementation. So you can see what's possible, but you can feel what's possible because you're actually doing the work and you're looking in other people's eyes and you're having the work done on you. That's what is required for almost anybody that I've ever talked to, I don't, I'm gonna remove the word almost, that's what's required for everybody I've ever talked to, 
that really wants to have the embodied confidence. You got to get in the, the, the bathtub of transformation. You got to get into this work. The fifth element is community support. A lot of people don't realize, and this is kind of hard to articulate actually, don't realize how critical it is to have encouragement, to hear that other people are having challenges, or for somebody else to ask a question that you didn't even realize was your question, or you didn't even realize it was a question that you're gonna bump up against later on. The collective journey of a community in the context of learning how to be a good coach is so immensely powerful and it's just something that a lot of people don't see the value in so they don't participate in and then finally if you want to go to that I would say polished level not from a intellectual approval or judgment standpoint but polished in the sense that you become magnetic you have that certainty that people want to say yes to the certainty that draws people in that pulls your seeker, your ideal client, to you, that requires a whole nother level of embodiment and you've got to implement in a structured way. What a lot of people do, even if they do all of this stuff, they don't have a structured implementation system with consistency, with feedback, with studying, these are all critical ingredients. And if you don't have one of these ingredients, it's simply going to slow you down. Again, not from a philosophical standpoint, but from a real life, like why are people not hiring me standpoint, I can virtually promise you one of these elements, for most people, probably three or four of these elements are missing. So if you wanna increase it, then you gotta follow that main recipe. So when you have that kind of coaching certainty. Now, actually, let me, let me dive into this just a little bit more. What I've seen, you know, I've been doing live events for 15 years. What I've seen is that even when people do the embodied implementation and even when they're a part of some support community, if they are lazy or just careless or in, un, inconsistent with the implementation, then everything gets slowed down. So a lot of people go back home after a live event and they have all these ma massive intentions and I'm gonna do this every single day and I'm gonna get with you and we're gonna call each other and we're gonna buddy buddy up and it just rarely, rarely happens unless there's a structured path. Without the structured path, most people will go back, they'll go back to their environments and the longer it takes for them to implement this stuff, the, the more that it just leaves their body and then the harder it is for them to get back on that path. So that's why structured implementation is so critical. Uh, it, it'll, it'll just make everything not just increase but exponentially increase. And again, it's an ingredient that the intellect doesn't believe is super important. So a lot of people don't participate because we just think that, okay, I know how to do it so I'm gonna do it. Just because you know how to do something doesn't mean you're, you're actually going to do it. So this is the majority of the work in the beginning of a coaching business or in the beginning of a new phase of your coaching business. This is the majority of the work. It's the certainty. It's, it's market research. It's personal research. It's understanding what your value is, not following all the, the templates and the tools. Once that work happens, then, here's the cool thing, then the clear offer generally just reveals itself. If you're having a real hard time trying to figure out what your offer is going to be, I'm gonna tell you, it's, you don't have this yet. Because when you have that level of certainty, you've done so much practice, and you've studied it, and you've gotten feedback from a lot of people, you're going to recognize what you're drawn to. You're going to recognize what you're most passionate about. You're going to recognize what other people give you real positive feedback about. And that's when the, the, your calling in the sense of a clear offer, like what your package is going to be. Even if you want to do private coaching versus group coaching, a lot of times you can't tell which one you're really going to gravitate toward until you go through 
the work. And then it becomes a lot more simple. And when you have that passion behind you of what's just been revealed about what your clear offer should be, now you can get into a bunch of conversations. It's easier to get into the conversations because you're clearer about your offer. And then it's easier once you're in the conversations to offer them something clearly and they will feel all the certainty throughout every step of the process. So hopefully this now makes sense why we got to go this way and the majority of the time is going to be spent here but then once this is taken care of and it's not like a line that you know once you cross that line you're done forever but once you move past that element or once it once it really gets in your body then you can go much faster this way so like in the beginning it might feel like there's this uphill curve that you got to get over but if you keep doing the work and you add all these elements you, that that hill is going to start to even out and then once that hill starts to even out then it actually starts to go down a little bit that's where it gets fun that's where it gets a little easier that's where you have a lot of momentum that's where you have a lot of flow that's where you have magnetism when people cross this line even I, I just said it wasn't a line but when when people really have that level of certainty that kind of gives them that tipping point people start coming to them we have plenty of uh, of uh, stories in our community, uh, one woman, as soon as she kind of got this piece, I think she had three or four people hire her the next week, like people that had just not been responding for a long, long time. And then all of a sudden, stuff starts coming. Most people are just doing too much chasing without certainty. And it's just going to make everything so much harder. And I'll tell you, almost nobody knows that this is the way to do it and almost nobody does it even if they know and that's why almost everybody is struggling that's why a lot of people are not getting the clients that they want is because they just have the shortcut mentality and they're not doing the foundational work once that foundational work is done then the sales templates and the marketing funnels and all those things then they matter until then not only do they not matter, but they're actually somewhat dangerous. So there are a ton of variables, obviously, you know, you are the main variable in this. There's a ton of angles, a ton of perspectives. Not everybody's journey is going to look the exact same way. Certainly when you look at all these ingredients, some of you are going to need different elements at different times with different intensity levels and all that's fine because this is about building a business around you and helping individual People. So if you have any comments or questions about any of this stuff or you want some support in your particular journey, then go ahead and put a comment down here um, and you know we'll support you as much as we possibly can. And stay connected to what you want to accomplish. Stay connected to what you want to experience and what you want to provide for other people. Coaching is incredible. Coaching is amazing. It can provide so much fulfillment. It can provide profit. You can create a massively successful business if you do it the right way. But it's not a commodity. That's what it has turned into for a lot of people is just a commodity. Like just run through this coaching program, get your certification on the wall, and then put up a sales funnel and then wham bam, you should have a bunch of people paying you and that's just not the way it works. It sounds really sexy and it's just not the way it works. But if you do it the right way, you stay committed to foundation and not shortcut, you'll astound yourself at what you can accomplish in this industry and the kind of transformation you can provide for other people. Now, if you like this video, check out that one so I can teach you how to put together those clear coaching offers. The ideal solution is that you give them a sandwich. You've got high end, low end, and then something in the middle. And studies have shown that when people are given three options, most of them, I think like 80 to 90%, choose the one in the middle.